Hello and welcome to a video on network layers. All right, so today we're going to learn about what a network layer is, why we need them. We're going to use the four layer network model to describe really how basic, net, basic networking occurs over the internet. We're also going to explain the advantages of this system. Now, if you've been watching some of the previous videos, especially the previous video when we looked at uh, the different network protocols like TCP, IP, HTTP, all the different email protocols, you'll notice that we use a lot of different protocols together to accomplish all the tasks we need over a, net, over a network. And there is a reason for this. Essentially, sending data over a network is complicated. There are a lot of different things we have to consider that we have to accomplish in order to get all our packets of data from one computer to another in working order. Things like the different applications that we use on the top, the web pages, the email programs, the file transfers. We have to think about things like encryption and security. We've got to think about splitting all the data into packets and frames. We have to consider error correction and recovery. We've got to consider the addressing of the data and how to route it to the right location in the networks all around the world. We've got to think about the different types of cable they're going to use, the Wi-Fi frequencies, the channels. It is an incredibly complicated process. The fact that we can send data from one computer to another computer and get that back in the blink of an eye is quite frankly miraculous. And we're going to have a little bit of a look at just how all these different things come together. So the key idea here is, is that you can't just have one protocol that can handle everything because it would just be very complex. It would be very unwieldy. It would be hard to change and update. So if you change one aspect of the protocol, for example, encryption, then you'd have to change everything and I would have a whole knock on effect. The software would be too complicated. It just wouldn't work. So the best idea is just to divide one big problem into a series of smaller sub problems that can be solved individually. So each layer has a particular function to perform. And we've already seen that we've looked at HTTP, we've looked at TCP, they all look at one area, but they can work together to accomplish everything. So a network layer is really just a division of network functionality. It covers a particular section of how network communication takes place and it works together with the other layers to make sure the whole task is done. So we have a look here. This table takes us through um, what we often refer to as the four layer network model or the TCP IP network model. And this is essentially how networking works across the internet. If you have a look at the top here, we've got the applications layer. And this is the top layer. It's close to the user. It's close to, you know, these are the things that we're using when we use networks, when we use the internet. It's the software and services that we're using, like our web browsers or our email clients. And this is protocols like HTTP, FTP, SMTP, POP3, IMAP4. These are all the services that we're using on the internet. Underneath that, we've got the transport layer. And the transport layer doesn't really care about the, the software that we're using. It doesn't really care about the data or what kind of data it is. What it cares about is transporting that data from one place to another. So that's dividing data into packets, adding sequence numbers and error checking information. At the other end, it's putting the packets back together again and dealing with any errors or corrupted data, dealing with any missing packets. And that's TCP or transport control protocol. Underneath that, we've got the internet layer and that's the internet protocol. And that's all about addressing the data, making sure that it can get from one computer to another, to another, to the right destination over a network. So it adds the source address, it adds the destination address, and that's what's happening. 
And then underneath that, we've got yet another layer, what's sometimes referred to as the network layer, sometimes called a data link layer. And that's all about Ethernet and Wi-Fi. This is getting the data ready to be actually physically transmitted, either along cables or through the air using radio waves in the case of Wi-Fi. And you can see how everything is divided up here. Your web browser is using HTTP, but your web browser doesn't really know how to break data up and send it across a network. That's what TCP is doing. TCP doesn't know about addressing data. It needs IP to do that. Internet Protocol does the addressing. But Internet Protocol doesn't know how to transmit data down cables or using radio waves. It needs other protocols underneath that to accomplish that task. But together, they can work one after the other to get data ready for transmitting and then put it back together again at the other end in the right way so that all the data is received. If you have a look at another diagram here, we can just see how all the different protocols work together on the internet in order to make sure we can send and receive data all over the world. So again, we've got the idea that your web browser is using HTTP, but again, it needs the help of TCP in order to break that data up, put it back together at the other end. We need IP to address the data, and we need something like Ethernet or one of the Wi-Fi protocols to get that data along and be transmitted physically along a cable. And at the other end, everything is put back, better, back together again until it reaches the application layer and the data can be processed. If you look here, we've got the blue arrows here, and they just kind of show you uh, the idea that your web browser thinks it's talking to a web server somewhere else in the world. And the web server is acting like it's talking to the web browser back again. But that is a little, that's not really what's happening. Because your web browser and the web server don't know about how to break the data up, how to handle error checking of packets. Your web browser doesn't know about addressing the data or transmitting along cables. So in reality, this isn't actually happening. What's happening is you're using lots of different software, lots of different protocols to get your data ready for transmitting along the cables. And then it's all getting put back together at the other end. And that's just constantly happening every time you use the internet all these different protocols and all this different software working together take a really complicated task and break it into a series of smaller tasks. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, actually that seems more complicated. Why can't we just get one protocol to do everything? Why are we getting all these different protocols to work together? Well, if we have a look at the next slide, we're going to look at some of the advantages. First of all, we can map how layers relate to each other. We can see what's happening above, we can see what's happening below. When a new protocol is developed, it can be slotted into the appropriate layer. So if we develop a new transport protocol, something different from TCP, we can just slot that in there. We don't have to replace the application layer. We don't have to replace the internet layer underneath or get rid of ethernet and develop new network protocols. We can just slot them in and out as they're developed and they can st everything still works nicely. We know what a protocol does by simply knowing which layer it operates in. If you know that something is, an, is working at, say, the transport layer, you know that it has to divide data into packets. You know it has to handle error checking. We know that it has to put packets back together at the right order. How it does that, that might be a different matter. It might work differently from TCP. It'll work differently from other protocols of that layer, but you know its basic functionality. It promotes interoperability between vendors and systems. They can design, they have different software that can work together because they're all following the right protocols. They know where they slot in in this four layer model. They know what data they're expecting to receive from the layer above. They know what data they need to send on to the layer below. And again, that's a key idea. Products designed for one layer don't need to know the whole process. If you're designing a new internet protocol, you need to know the data that you're getting from the transport layer, and you need to know the data that you're going to send on, but it, your, that software doesn't have to understand the whole process. 
it can let the other protocols take care of that. And it helps us conceptualize the really complicated system of network communications. The more you study networking, the more complicated it gets. And that's true right way through high school, university, into a professional career in networking. It gets more and more complicated. But by taking like some simple diagrams, we can get a broad overview of the process without having to get too deeply involved. So in summary, sending data over a network is really complicated. We can't have just one protocol that can handle everything. You'd end up with one piece of software that was very complex, very unwieldy, and it would just be a nightmare to change and update. And all the different companies would fight over whose software they were using. It's not going to work. So we like to divide the problem into layers. And then we have lots of different protocols that work together that can be implemented with different pieces of software. We can slot them in and out as required. We can update them easily without having to change the whole process. And each layer can simply be thought of as a division of network functionality. We've got different layers to handle different things. Go back to the table uh, earlier in the slides if you're not too sure. But this is really a nice overview of how things work actually on the internet. You've got your web browser, you've got different pieces of software built into your operating system, you've got device dri drivers handling things like Ethernet, and all these pieces of software can work together implementing different protocols to make sure that your web pages arrive, that your video streams arrive, that you can send and receive emails. All right, I'm going to stop there. I think that's enough for one day. I don't want a nice long video like we did with network protocols. I'll keep this a little bit shorter. Good luck with your studies. Good luck in the future.